Okay, Bible and Daily Lifers, we are going through the whole Bible, breakneck speed, although we're slowing it down in Genesis because we're building the foundation for everything. The Bible is one continuous story, one continuous account. It's all about Jesus. It's about God and people and how Jesus brings God and people together. Back together again because people had rebelled against God and broke the relationship and everything went crazy. And if you don't know about that, go back a few videos and we talk about that in chapter 3 of Genesis. So now we're into the portion of Noah and the ark. Now this story is disputed by quite a few people. They don't particularly think it happened. Well, it definitely happened and we'll talk a little bit about that and we'll see how it's totally feasible that it happened. Chapter 6, verse 1. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any one of those they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit will not always contend with humans forever. They're mortal. Their days will be 120 years. Does that mean that their longevity would only be 120 years or does it mean 120 years from now humanity will cease when a judgment of God comes upon the earth either way verse 5 the Lord had seen how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was evil all the time the Lord regretted it there was violence on the earth. And so, here we are. Jesus, in Matthew 24, said something interesting. People were asking him about the coming of the Lord, and when would he come back, and what would be the signs of his coming, and what is the end of the world. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. Now, people have loved to speculate about that days of Noah statement. What did he mean by that? Are we in days that are like the days of Noah? Could be. I happen to think that the times that we're in are very much like as in the days of Noah. Uh, for instance, well, uh, the verse we just read, chapter 6, verse 1, it said when the population began to multiply, began to explode. Do you know we're in a population explosion right now. Uh, you, you go back, we're once again in a population explosion. They say in 1960, I'm sorry, they say in 1650, 1960, my child of the 60s, I can't help going back there, but in 1650, there were 400 million people on the planet, a lot of people. But it took all the way from Noah's day, when Noah comes out of the ark, to our day to get 400 million people. Well, to 1650. 400 million people. Then, in 200 years, so from 1650 to 1850, 200 years, it grows to 850 million people. Now, it's amazing because it goes from Noah's time all the way to 1650, 400 million. 200 years later, you're at 850 million, more than doubled. Well, in 1951, 100 years later, there were 2 billion people on the planet, exploding. Wow, 2 billion people. Well, then 20 years after that, 1971, there were three and a half billion people. And then just nine years after that one, 1980, is when we hit four billion. 1990, 10 years later, five billion. And now what are we approaching? Eight billion people? We're at seven billion, counting towards eight billion. So as it was in the days of Noah, when people were multiplying upon the face of the earth, Jesus is talking about the time that he would return. So the other thing that we just read here in chapter 6 is that 
in the days of Noah, it was a sex crazed, sexually creepy environment. And so that says they saw the beauty of women and they went and just took whatever that woman they wanted to be. And it appears there's some kind of abnormal depravity that's going on in men dominating women. Could be the same. Verse 2, it seems as though marriage was held in low regard. Just went out, got whoever they wanted. I took the woman that they chose. You know, where's romance? Where's love? Where's attraction? Where's building a family? And so also, as you go back just a little bit before chapter 6, before chapter 5, and you see the development of civilization, because you, in the book of Genesis, we have, find the beginning of everything and firsts in everything. Well, what you find is that there's rapid changes and there's rapid advances in technology. And it tells us in those chapters that that's when people began to work with metals. That's when people began to work with arts and with crafts, where agriculture was becoming somewhat sophisticated. And now there's architecture and there's starting to be cities. And rapid change can desensitize you. And it seems like in Noah's day, people were desensitized. Well, rapid technology around us can desensitize us. And it seems like people are getting desensitized, as it was in the days of Noah. It goes on and it says that uh, Matthew 24, that there was an appointed time of judgment looming. Well, that's what we just read in verse 3 in chapter 6, that judgment is looming. I think it's the 120 years from then that judgment comes. A time when people are fighting with God, striving with God. You go on and it seems that in verse 4 of Genesis, there's some weird activity, maybe some satanic activity. Some people think that what's being referenced there, the sons of God are, are demons, and some think that it's demon-possessed people. Uh, well, whatever, it produced some odd offspring, and maybe we're in a time where we're seeing some of that. Verse 5, it seems to indicate that there's global wickedness. Well, now we are global like never before. And in some ways, being global works for us. We're in a global economy. We're in global travel. You can travel anywhere you want. Just go to a major city, go to an airport, go wherever you want. We're a global community. Well, there's global wickedness. It's not that there's any patches of you know, people who are holding upright moral standards higher than anybody else. Everybody seems to be degrading together. Some places are better than others, but it's catching up everywhere. Verse 5 in chapter 6, you know, personal wickedness is at an all-time high. Um, constantly, all the time, people were just thinking about, you know, crazy stuff they can do. You know, verse 5, all of this breaks God's heart, which means that God has feelings and the Lord's heart was grieved. Uh, verses 7 and 8 tells us, you know, that God is a God of justice and he's going to judge. And so, in the midst of that, in the days of Noah, are we in the days of Noah? Is this like the days of Noah? What happened in the days of Noah? Well, there was a lone man, Noah, who finds grace in God's eyes. I love that. In the midst of all of the violence, in the midst of the population explosion, in the midst of this sex gray society, in the midst of this society where marriage is held in, in disdain, where there's rapid technological changes that are desensitizing people and you can't keep up with it when the time of... Uh, looming judgment in their satanic activity and global wickedness and personal wickedness is at an all-time high and God's heart is broken, he finds somebody, shows grace, and they follow him. They follow him. Uh, Noah, he lives among the people of his times, uh, much like Moses and Daniel and Jesus and John the Baptist and you know, it's possible to be brought up in a fully entrenched, wicked society, not compromise, and not compromise. It tells us in verse 11 of chapter 6 that the earth was filled with violence. Well, you know, the 20th century may have been the most violent ever. You had Joseph Stalin and the Cultural Revolution and China and the Holocaust and Khmer Rouge and World Wars and Vietnam and Idi Amin and Rwanda and civil wars all over the place, universal violence. 
People had corrupted themselves, but there's a way out. Sometimes Jesus is seen as the ark. You go into the ark and there you're safe. You're safe in the storm. You're safe from judgment. Jesus, we want to enter your ark. So Lord Jesus, we do want to enter your ark. We want to come into the place of safety. We want to come into the place of salvation. We want to come into the place of deliverance. We want to come into the place where even in the midst of the storm and even in the midst of our personal storms, we are safe with you and you will protect us from the storm and you will give us a whole new beginning in Jesus' name. Hey, love you guys. We'll continue going through the Bible. The Bible, the whole Bible, nothing but the Bible. Bless you.